Hi, this is Federico with Cuddle, and in this video, I want to answer a question that was submitted about modifying an existing box template. So let me explain. So if we have a box like this one, the idea is that we want to create a sort of cutout on the center of the box um, that allows us to create some sort of pattern inside. And so uh, at the end, I should have like a pattern that's fitting just inside of this box. But the idea is that I need to respect the margins that we create. So we want to have some sort of margin. So the distance between the edge of the box and the cutout. And we don't want the pattern to uh, go past those lines or even go past the lines uh, of the box, kind of like messing it up. Um, so let me show you how to do this. So I'm going to move over to the templates section of the Cuddle website, um, which you can find over here, templates. And I'm going to go to the laser cut boxes section. And here, I want to find the closed box with finger joints template. I'm going to click on it. Um, and so the way this one works is that you have, you can select the width and the depth of the box and the, uh, and the height and other settings. And then it should let you download an SVG to create a box. There is a longer video explaining how to assemble it. Um, but I want to do, what I want to do is change this particular template. So I want to open it in the Coddle editor by clicking this button over here. And when I do that, I should get a prompt at the bottom that says that this project is owned by Cuddle, and I need to make a copy to save the changes. So I need to do that. So I'm going to click on Copy This Project, and that's going to save a private copy to my projects folder, and all the changes are going to be saved, um, all the changes that we're going to be making right now. All right, so let's make the changes that we want. So I'm going to look at this assembly view, and I think I want to choose the top section of the box to do this modification. So I am going to look for the top section of the box here in the components view. So I'm going to click on that. And so a quick explanation of how this is constructed. There is a rectangle that, has, that is dimensioned by inner width and inner depth. This is over here. So that rectangle uh, gets changed by width and depth parameters. And then it has this modifier that replaces its edges uh, to become finger joints. So if I were to disable that, that just turns into a regular rectangle. So what I'm going to do is create a rectangle that is sized similarly. So I'm going to grab a rectangle, uh, place it right in the center, and I'm going to size it by the same parameters. Let's, uh, let's give it a color so we can distinguish it. So I'm going to uh, go to the scale section, and this was inner width, and then this one was inner depth. And so now I have a rectangle that it res is responding to the width and the depth of, of, the, of the whole box. Uh, and so now I want to sort of contract it to give it those margins we talked about. So I'm going to select the rectangle and apply this modifier called contract or inset. And so that's going to give those margins and it's going to let me select even what the margin size is by this parameter here of distance. Um, and so that should respond whenever I ch change even the width and the depth of the whole box, then the margin should be kept. Um, and so one nice thing I could do uh, is to actually extract that particular uh, parameter distance um, so I can modify it in the whole project. So I'm going to click on these three dots, extract this parameter. I'm going to call it the margin so I can understand what it's doing. And I'm going to move it up to be a project parameter. So now it's available right here. Um, and I can double check that things are working. I can go back to the readme, and I can see that I made that pink uh, box. I have those margins. They apply. And then I can change the, the width and the depth, and then it also applies. So OK, let's go back to the top. Um, and so now I want to place a pattern inside of the box. So to make my life a little bit easier, I'm actually going to take that rectangle and make it into a separate component. So I'm going to right click here, and then there is an option that says extract as component. So that seems like nothing changed, but actually I can go over here, uh, and then this is separate. And whatever changes I make to these is going to apply to where it's placed. So I'm going to actually name it the pattern. So let's quickly create a pattern as an example. So um, I can grab a rectangle. I'm going to place it here in the corner. I'm going to make that rectangle a little smaller, um, say half an inch. And then I'm going to um, use the uh, tile repeat 
to create a pattern that kind of copies uh, a tile version of the rectangles. Uh, let's change the distance here um, to make them closer. Could also do it by dragging it like so. And then let's increase the number of repetitions to the right and the number of repetitions down. Um, so the problem with what I just did is that now, if I look at it, then that pattern is kind of overlapped. Ev ov uh, it's overlapped everywhere. It's not what we want. Um, so I want to kind of find the the way to just constrain that pattern to the rectangle I created. And so the idea here is that I want to grab the intersection between the pattern and the box. Um, and so I'm going to select those two. And there is a modifier called intersect. So it's called Boolean intersect, and if I apply it, now the pattern gets cut off um, where that rectangle is. Um, this particular one is not nicely centered, but like you get the idea. So now if I go look at it, you can see that the pattern is intersected, and if I change the margin, it should it should uh, it should work. Um, so I can now, for example, just you know select the pattern and move it around if I need to, to center it, um, to get kind of like a nicer look. So that's an example with a creative pattern. But the idea is that we want to kind of be able to drop any other pattern. So let's go back a little bit. Let me delete that one I created. Um, and I'm going to just drop one that I created elsewhere. So I'm going to go to File, Import SVG. Um, and then I created this hexagon pattern. I'm going to open it. So I should place it right where I want it. Um, then you know I can play with this pattern. I can change uh, the size and things like that if I need to. But importantly, I want to place it uh, so it overlaps with that rectangle we created. Um, and now I want to be able to apply the same intersection. So uh, one easy way to do it is to go ahead and drag this hexagon pattern down into the group that I had previously created. And so that, that applies the intersection to it. And I can actually select it and move it around if I need to with my arrow keys. Um, and now that pattern should be applied to the whole thing. And let's just double check that things are working. Um, I can change the width and the depth of the box. And I can change the margin. Um, so hopefully this gets you started with the idea that you wanted. Um, I will share this project I created as a starting point for you to modify and play with. So Thank you so much for submitting the question. I'll see you in the next one.